with NERVDA. Welcome to the show tonight, and we're uh, tremendously excited. We have Mike and Jennifer Wendland as our special guests tonight, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy every minute of it, so get your questions ready and uh, uh, bring John in here. We'll talk a little bit about the weekly activities. Hey, John, how are you doing tonight? Hey, Bob, it's good to talk to you again. I can't believe it's another Wednesday. We've been doing these since January now, and uh, now we look out at 7 o'clock at night Eastern time, and it's bright out. Before right. it was dark and dreary, and uh, but we've got some bright guests tonight, so that's going to be pretty cool. That, that's for sure. Uh, not too much local uh, news today. We do have a big blowout sale coming over at Longview RV, and as Mr. Emerson always reminds us, right off the highway, right on the price. So we did post a video from that today. I uh, have not heard from any other dealers with respect to open houses, but if we get some as we get closer to the week, we'll certainly post them on the Facebook page. Perfect. And uh, our good friend Chuck Woodbury, who was on about a month ago with us, uh, Chuck and several members of his RV travel team are out in Elkhart, Indiana this week at the Our Village Rally. If some of you are members of Our Village, this is their first annual rally. It's kind of like a Facebook for RVers, and uh, they've done pretty well. I think they're up to about 100,000 members. So uh, that's pretty much, oh, we did uh, get a press release this week from Winnebago. They released a prototype of an all-electric motorhome, but don't rush down to your dealer. It's going to be quite a while before you ever see it, but they're certainly playing around with the technology to see what they can get there. Well, you know, you got to admit, Winnebago is really taking, um, taking steps to introduce new products because we saw the uh, Intent, which is a totally different Class A, and then we saw the Class B, um, Revell. And um, they are not resting on their laurels, even though they've been in business for 60 years. They're uh, continuing to um, come up with new items. That's yeah, true. Hey, we get a couple of new viewers tonight. Hi, Steve. Glad to see you as a, a new viewer. And John, John and Pamela Waddle, I think you guys are probably new too. I don't think we've seen you two either. Well, let's let's kind of get right to it tonight because, uh, as we said earlier. Our guests tonight are Mike and Jennifer Wendland, and there they are. And Bob, guess, they need no introduction, so let's not even introduce them. Let's do it that way. That's right. Every, <laughs> I'm, every, I'm Jennifer. <laughs> every, everybody in the world knows Mike and Jennifer, right? No, no. <laughs> great to see you well, guys. Uh, great to see you guys, and thank you very much for joining us tonight. I think we got couple of new viewers it must have been your reputation it certainly wasn't John and I so <laughs> we got we got a couple of new ones there um, so Mike and Jennifer you you're good friends you're you're tremendous ambassadors for the RV industry and uh, Mike you want to give us a little bit of your background I don't want to read it I think it's nice when they hear it right from you for folks that don't know you you got a stellar background before you ever thought of doing the RV thing so give us a little background well, I, I never thought I'd be doing this. This is our, we're starting our seventh year now of, uh, of doing all this stuff. But uh, I was in the media in, uh, I was an investigative reporter for most of my career for something like uh, 40 plus years at uh, big city newspapers and, uh, and television networks and television stations. Uh, Mike, still, you go black, do you go back to black and white TV? Uh, no, John. Uh, okay. I don't even remember that. No, you were there. You were there when they invented it. But uh, no, no. Actually, Jennifer got a kick out of that. Did. At least one person liked it. Yeah. But I did that for, you know, 40 years. And um, I don't think it's any secret that the media and journalism has certainly changed a lot and not for the good. And when I sort of retired, I, I wanted to go back and visit many of the towns and places that I went to as a journalist. And I wanted to get reacquainted with Jennifer. We had been, uh, uh, so we had started, a, we'd done some freelance TV and I wanted her to see that the places I went. So we bought a little RV, a little class B road trek RV. And, you know, I can't, I can't keep quiet. I have to write and report all the time. It's in his DNA. He has to report and tell people about what he's seeing and what he's doing. And uh, I'm in on it too. I think it's great fun. So I was going to say, don't, don't, just, don't just blame him, Jennifer. You're right up on the screen with him too. That's right. Jennifer, give us, give us your background. And then I want to ask Mike a very important question about um, the traveling for a media affiliate versus traveling for yourself. But Jennifer, give us your, give us your um, 
your elevator pitch. Oh, my elevator pitch. Okay, Mike and I, uh, well, I'll just go way back. Mike and I are high school sweethearts. We were. And so we've known each other just forever. And uh, I- um, Jennifer was nine when we were married. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I worked as a producer and uh, did all kinds of different jobs that uh, I guess you would say help out and uh, worked behind the camera. And then all of a sudden you had me in front of the camera and doing all kinds of things. And I love to travel. When I was young, little kid, the mailman had to dislike me because I would rip out every little ad in the in the different magazines and papers and ask for free brochures on Yellowstone and all those great places that I wanted to go to someday. And now you've got the opportunity. Yeah, Mike, here's, here, here's the point I wanted to bring up. You can say that in your business world, you traveled to you know 50 states and 17 foreign countries and three continents, et cetera. But effectively as a media guy, they threw you on a plane Somebody sent you there. Somebody made the hotel reservation. Somebody told you where to be. And then they told you to get out of there as soon as possible. So just like so many people in the entertainment business, they visit 34 states and, you know, uh, 38, 38 cities in those 34 states. But they don't get to see the city at all. They don't well, even get, to get the Chamber of Commerce brochure. Yeah, we, we call that parachute journalism, John and Bob, and that's kind of what it was. Uh, I would drop in and cover the latest disaster of the day. Um, as an investigative reporter, I, I would spend more time in a community, uh, and those would be all of my, my own doing, arranging it. But uh, bottom line is we didn't stay long, and we weren't there to really enjoy the community. We were there reporting a story, and very often it was a disaster. So um, I wanted to go back and see those mountains that were just a backdrop to my stand-up, and yeah, that's how we started right. traveling in the RV. Yeah. And uh, it, it was it was it was a, just an amazing difference. In uh, we we've been on the road, like I said, now we're starting our seventh year. Yeah, and as an investigative reporter, you don't go around saying uh, to tell tell people who you are because you don't want them to know who you are. They, they used to call me Bad News Wendlin because when I showed up, there was something bad that had happened or we were going to expose. So, and yeah. now, you know, we're telling good news and uh, it's it's just a complete turnaround in what we're, the way we're approaching our, uh, our reporting duties. And the stress level is probably a bit lower too, huh? Except when we're in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty high. <laughs> well, wouldn't you go, but the cool part about traffic is that you've got the capability at any time to get off that highway and uh, find yourself a rest area and conk out. Well, we tend to pick um, what they call the blue highways, the two lane roads. We tend to try and stay away from the interstate as much as possible. Now there are times, uh, too many times when we have to be someplace. And so we'll run through as fast as we can, but we try to keep on the secondary roads and we follow what we call the uh, 330 rule. We uh, try to cover 330 miles or I'll stop at 3.30, but sometimes that's 3.30 in the a.m. No, once it was. When once you were was. driving, you <laughs> had had some, oh. <laughs> you had had some chocolate, so you were wired. Jennifer's letting out all your secrets, Mike. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you know, it, what's interesting uh, with your followers, when you started out, obviously, in the, the smaller units, but you're following now, uh, the number of people that follow you is staggering, but they're in all types of RVs. So although you travel in the Class B and, and, and report on that regularly, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your demographics and uh, the people that are following you? And uh, I know why I like you guys, and I know why I like to follow you, but uh, for, the, for the new folks, and uh, we have a couple of new folks on tonight, and Jerry Plant, who's a regular, says good evening. And Joe Couture, who's also a regular, says Joe's got a hi, question. guys. Have you, have you, is, let me ask, you, you, can, you can answer that one. Can you see that one okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been to New England, uh, Joe. We've been to Cape Cod. We've been in and around. And uh, uh, this year we're debating whether we're going to uh, go back to, we, we were in Maine a year or so ago, went up and down uh, all over New England. And we're debating another trip, if not this year, uh, the Maritimes next year. Uh, but um, you, you ask about our demographics and you, you know, uh, it's a lifestyle and that's where we, we try to, we're, we're sort of branding everything RV lifestyle. 
And uh, it's, um, it's a state of mind. And it doesn't make any difference whether you have a class A or a B or a C motor coach or a fifth wheel or a towable. Even if it's a tent, we count them as part of our, our community because it's about getting out there and, you know, enjoying God's beautiful creation and, and just having uh, having a great time as we uh, as, you, as you put up there, celebrate the RV lifestyle. Hmm. You know what? Hey, you guys, you, I think you already answered this question, but one of the questions I wrote down beforehand is, Interstates or state and county roads and why? What do you prefer? We prefer the county roads. We prefer the blue highways. We prefer not being on the interstate. We, we were just uh, on a trip from uh, the Florida Panhandle to Texas. And, uh, you know, it's about a five-hour drive or a six-hour drive to the border where we were going to go. It took us three days to get there because we kept driving those, uh, those county roads and those uh, two-lane roads. And we'd find something around every bend and we'd stop and enjoy it. And that's kind of the way we like to stop. We call it serendipity travel. We, yeah. Whatever, whatever we feel like we go left, right, or straight ahead or stop here. And that, that's and, what we like to do. In your particular case with a class B, you've got that opportunity to go on even dirt roads oh, as opposed to, you know, hauling a big, uh, you know, 40 foot diesel pusher. We do a lot I of boondogging. I absolutely love our class B. It took him a couple of years to talk me into buying one. Oh, that and was when hard. I bought it, was it hard, though. I asked the salesperson, how much are we going to lose? How much is this going to depreciate if we sell it in a year? And because uh, I wasn't sure about it at all. But I, I love the Class B. I don't know how people exist without the Class B. Even it's, if you got kids, I mean. Kids, you need something maybe a little bigger. Um, well, I mean, for sporting events. Oh, know, yeah. For, oh, right. For getting, right. Going like, to as soccer as moms. Well, yeah. When I when I do my seminars and, and talk about Class Bs, we talk about them as second cars. You know, there's a lot of people that want to get into RV and, and think they can't do it. But the fact of the matter is, some of our Class Bs are now down around eighty thousand dollars. They're less than what you pay for a car. And to Jennifer's point, you're right. The Saturday morning dance lessons, the soccer games. I mean, it's it's a natural. It really opens up eyes for the people when I bring that up. And you yeah. must get, you must get that on your seminars. And you can still go camping because you have your your class B, and then you take a tent for for grandkids or kids. And uh, we went camping in the middle of nowhere, and the girls got the RV, and Mike and the dog got the tent. We got the tent, and you know what's funny? Uh, <laughs> uh, next time we're going to reverse that. <laughs> the dog hey, loved it. Go you know, ask if you're. Too. <laughs> your units you don't have the four by four road trek right we do we do yes oh, do? okay and that's that's the kind of camping we love we love boondocking we just cannot get enough of it and joe's asking that question i see on the screen that yeah ours is the uh the one we have now is the road trek cs adventurous xl it's a little extra long it's 14 inches longer than the regular uh sprinter and we have the four by four which makes it a little higher so we have a little more ground clearance and uh, we can go anywhere. We don't even make reservations. That's that's how that's our style of camping. We just we never have, we've never not been able to find a place. I am so spoiled with the solar and not having to plug in. The, it really is luxury. The technology was it factory solar, factory Pardon? solar, or did you have it aftermarket yeah, solar? It was factory solar and uh, lithium batteries. I mean, this technology just in the last couple of years, you really can be en energy independent out there. We don't. Very seldom do we even when we when we do go to a campground, we don't even have to plug in most of the time. Plug in, wow! It's even, even that's, even the that's where yeah, that, that, that is just coming. A couple other manufacturers have announced that lithium package too. It's it's a little bit pricey, but uh, certainly worth it in terms of the what the trade offs are in terms of not having to worry about the campgrounds. It's uh, it's nice when you can do it, but you know we see in many of the forums and the newsletters. Getting campground reservations this year are really difficult. I, I post it almost every day or a couple of times a week on our on our nerve to page that if you're gonna go camping this year, you better make the reservations early, but they better you know, do what you do. You know, I, I know you're talking to the industry and and the industry needs to really, I think, uh, you know, we're selling RVs in record numbers, but so many of these people are buying the image that they've heard that they're gonna go out and find these great campgrounds and and you can't. Most of the campgrounds are booked long in advance. And so we need more camping spaces. And then we need more education about the BLM land and state forest and national forest where you don't have to have a, a hookups to stay. And 
I think that's where we're going to see this industry really moving, where people can get out there, even in a C, a class C. A, it's a little hard to go boondocking out there. Uh, it's hard to get an A out of Walmart parking lots, you know, for boondocking. But uh, Cs and B, <laughs> B pluses, uh, this is this is where we find the sweet spot for camping for us. Mm. Hey, you guys, um, Mike, you've kind of both both of you really have become kind of gadget. Um, fanatics and you post a lot of content about the gadgets that you have as far as um, being able to you know produce your social media programs many times live from a site um, tell us what your current toys are and how you implement them in your uh, in your broadcast capabilities we never have enough but you can't have enough toys uh, Jeff. and there's always um, something new well, the, you know, the thing that uh, fascinates me, I love the technology. I still do a weekly piece for NBC TV stations on uh, applications and smartphones. But uh, I love the ability to go out and with my uh, laptop or with my uh, iPhone to be able to reach tens of thousands of people from just about anywhere. Uh, and uh, so I have um, I'm always getting new cameras, but so I have several new cameras. Basically, we use a Verizon hotspot, uh, yeah. a MiFi in our vehicle. Yeah. We're testing out a prototype of a satellite internet system from a company named Chimeta. Now, that's probably two years ahead of prime time. Bill Gates is the primary investor in that company. But it's a flat satellite dish. It's on our, our uh, RV, and uh, it can uh, automatically adjust to all the satellites. And so uh, the rare times when I don't have a cell signal, we use that to, to do it. But we do all of our podcasts, all of our videos. We report those, post those all from the road and from our RV. And it's all these gadgets that kind of help. Uh, we really enjoy the, the technology, the cameras and the, uh, and the wireless systems. Which is kind of amazing when you consider your background and the amount of people and gear that you used to have to take with you to do a live shot. You know, it used to be, and we, we and it wasn't that long ago that we'd go a live you have shot. Your producer, you'd your have to have the producer, person, your yep. camp yep. person, sound, camera, producer, lights. Yep. Uh, and then, you know, we got rid of the producers, got rid of the yep. light guy, then they're into the sound guy. And pretty soon now, now these kids are out there doing it all themselves. But, you know, the quality of our smartphones are just uh, stunning. I mean, you know, this is 4K on an, on an yeah. iPhone, yeah. 4K. Yeah. Uh, so you can do all of this stuff um, with, uh, with very little gear, and, and uh, you yeah. can go live from anywhere, from anywhere. Yeah. Well, Joe's got another question there, and uh, kind of fits right into you talking about the smartphone. Joe, um, I have uh, the, the, the one go-to app that we use more than any other app out there is called um, Allstays, A-L-L-S-T-A-Y-S. It is hands down the single uh, most important uh, app that we have on our smartphone. It lists every single uh, campground in the country. You can find reviews on it. It will vector you in, give you directions. It lists where you can boondock. It lists uh, Walmart parking lots that are friendly. It lists where the nearest dump stations are if you have to do that. Uh, we love that app. And that app is probably 99% of the time the one app that we All use when you're looking for a place. Interesting. Hey, we got some new people on here whose names that I haven't seen here. Uh, Steve and John and Pamela, Kathy, um, RV Talk Radio. And yeah, just tell us, you know, just write in the comments there. Tell us where you're from. Tell us where you're at. And um, it's always interesting to see. Um, we had a scenario last week where Bob was in Florida at the airport. I was here in Massachusetts and our guest was in Maine. And, uh, you know, as you know, you get people probably from all over the world. If you've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that tune into your broadcast. I got one other question for you guys. Um, and I know that. Um, you mentioned this briefly. I want to see if you're still doing it. But I said during the winter time, taking a shower in the road truck when it's zero degrees outside. And you had mentioned the um, what you do for fitness as well as showers is you get a certain kind of membership at a certain national fitness club. You can mention brands if you want. And then you, you do two things at once. Absolutely. Anytime fitness. We have a membership there because there's like 
3,500 of them all across the country. And uh, we can boondock and then we can go exercise and take a shower. Yeah, yeah they all have individual. Oh, you're boondock. oh, you're getting three deals out of it. Yeah. What, what? Exercise and shower. <laughs> yeah, you, my wife is a is a gym rat. So part of the deal with SR is that I get to get her to a gym uh, more days a week than uh, not. And uh, anytime fitness is great. They give you a private bathroom with a really nice, clean, nice shower. And those are those are great. So you get to work out and uh, and it's uh, it's it's like your own private bathroom. And there's three thousand of them. But, uh, and it's anytime fitness. You can go there at two in the morning anytime. if you wanted to. Yeah, three a.m. Kath, uh, um, Jennifer, when you're done driving, right? That's, That's right. right. <laughs> Don't feed her chocolate. Uh, and there's other chains out there that are like that, that that you can do the same thing. But that happens to be the one we picked, and it's uh, we have no connection with them at all. We just like to use them. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess so, folks. Uh, folks, it's got to be your drawer, Mike and Jennifer. We got uh, Todd from. Uh, is it? Pekin, Illinois, mm -hmm. and Kathy from Nabari, Florida, and Steve is over there in Poughkeepsie, New York. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. That's we know great. Kathy. Kathy's a brand new uh, Pleasure Way owner. She bought a, they have a brand new Pleasure Way. I think this is their third or fourth RV in the last four years, but they're they're uh, good friends and uh, RVers. And well, they went north of the border for a manufacturer. Uh, they did well. That's where most you know most of the Class Bs, other than you know, right. the, the big three, are all. In Canada, right. plunge away, leisure vans, and road trekking. And, uh, you know, Winnebago's mm -hmm. trying hard, and, and Airstream. Airstream is coming on hard. And, uh, yep. oh, gosh, there's two or three other now Class B makers uh, They in realize the, the market that there is, the demand that everybody's well, you know, it took a long time for the, to the bees. took a long time for the uh, industry and also also my dealers. Uh, I talked to my dealers about this a lot. They, for the longest time, dealers felt that Class Bs were a niche product. But the fact of the matter is, every year for the last four years, they're up 25%. So every manufacturer now is looking at it. Because back up in New Hampshire, you got Heimer, Heimer North America, which bought Road Tech Trek a couple of years ago. Uh, but Coleman's come at, Coleman's come back into it. They were there years ago with conversion vans. Our first, our is first just, uh, RV was a Coleman pop-up camper. And then we, go. Got, then we got a little Shasta travel trailer. Uh, first the trailer, then the oh, pop-up, yeah. then the tent. Then we went to a tent. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> You went, you reverted. We, we, we did. We reversed it. <laughs> you used to really get mad at me because I would call our motor home my tent on wheels. And uh, he would get upset with me. But then when I explained it to him, we went travel trailer, pop up tent. So now that's right. It's my tent on wheels. And it, now you call it our adventure mobile because right. that's really what it takes us is everywhere. Yeah. 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 Hey, I got another yeah. question for you guys. Um, uh, yeah. Restaurant food or campsite food or supermarket food that you prepare and take with you? What, what, what is your preference on those? Well, what's yours? I prefer taking food. That is my choice. Healthy to do food. That. I, I like, I want healthy food. It's very hard, the paths that we travel. <laughs> to. Uh, Mike, Mike, make that face again when you said healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the danger about all this, two dangers really to RVing that nobody talks about. One, is that everybody thinks that you're on, you know, when you're off vacation, a lot of times you're on vacation in vacation mode every day. So you eat more than you should, you drink more than you should. And, and you know, that's kind of a dark side of it. We've seen a lot of that. And then the other thing is something called sitting disease, which is, you know, you're sitting in the RV as you drive and then you sit at the campsite and it, studies show how unhealthy that is. And what we're noticing is, um, so many people are health conscious now. One of the things that we're seeing this this increase in boondocking is so people can they use the RVs to go enhance what their passions are, whether it's kayaking or fly fishing or mountain biking, and that's where these RVs are are booming for people so who the, are very active. The activity is the destination, not not a physical campground, but the activity. Absolutely. is what drives them as opposed to going somewhere to relax they're going somewhere to work work to not work but to uh be active yeah, yeah. well absolutely. That's, that's but that's a big that's that's a lot of what's driving the class b market the millennials the younger generations because they can be socially mobile and work from the road and 
and do the things that they like to do, and they don't necessarily want to have a house. And, and, and that's totally. why they be class Bs, and, and later on they'll become Cs and As. But that's a lot of the growth, and, and you must see that in your travels. Yeah, we're seeing that. But we're seeing a lot of towables, a lot of younger younger families in towables uh, with a couple of kids. A lot of people are what they call road schooling, you know, teaching their kids yep. Uh, yep. And, as they travel around. What a great season to do that for a year or two with your kids. And, uh, you know, there's just it's just, there's an excitement out there. You know, we've been, like I said, this is our seventh year. And when we compare it, looking back when we first started to now, there is this genuine excitement every place we go about people excited to discover this, uh, you know, all of North America out there. Hmm. Well, you know, I, I don't I don't see them on tonight yet, but they use Don and Mark Polk usually join us. And they, I talked to Mark have, today. Mark will be on my podcast yeah. next week. I just interviewed Mark today. <laughs> yeah. I talked to him the other day because he just got done with back surgery, and I'm going in for back surgery in June, so I had to get some hints from him. But, yeah, he's, but, he's but, but they, they kind of like your profile because Don likes the healthy foods and the vegetarian stuff, and Mark likes the good stuff that all the guys eat, so they, they kind of marry you there. But it's good. Uh, they're called road scholars. That's right. Uh, road road scholars. Very, very cool. The road scholars. Uh, Some call them road scholars, but road oh. road school is what they what they teach him. But uh, pretty cool. Yeah. What is, uh, Kim's yeah. Kim's got a group on that. Uh, okay. John and Pamela are from Arizona. Um, let's talk a little bit, if we can, Mike, about your YouTube channel, uh, which is extremely popular. And you know, if if you're into Facebook and you're into social media then you're probably into YouTube, but let, let people know what you have. And I, I did a little yellow highlight on those areas there, but talk to us a little bit about the YouTube channel. Well, the YouTube, we came to YouTube uh, late in the game, only in the last few months and have gone from just a few thousand subscribers up to 38,000, turn that today. And it's growing about 3000 subscribers a month. Uh, I got to say that I'm have we're having more fun doing the videos because we get to tell more of the story. You get to show it, and uh, it takes a lot more work. But we are really enjoying uh, all the videos. We put a new video up every Thursday morning, and sometimes we do a couple a week, but uh, usually every Thursday morning. You doing them live? Uh, I, we do go live occasionally on YouTube, but the videos are are actually little stories, little documentaries about you know where we've been and the kind of things we're doing or the advice we have. And you know, there's a couple that you can see there. It's called the RV Lifestyle Channel, and you can just go to rvlifestylechannel.com and it will it will take you to the YouTube. But uh, it's it's been we've had more fun, and then it's made Jennifer a star. She has. We got a call. I won't say where. We got a call from um, an RV show because we do these seminars like everybody does at an RV show. And they said, hey, can can we fly you two out? Will you come out and uh, and do a seminar? And I said, well, sure. That's what we do. That's, you know, absolutely. We'll do that. OK. So I told Jennifer and we wrote the dates down. Right. We we're ready to go. And then the phone rang about two days later and they said, you know, we were just looking at our budget. and We wonder, can just Jennifer come? <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew you were getting to that. I but, knew you. but that's been <laughs> so much fun for the two of us to have fun on the video, and uh, and and we we really enjoy that. And then you know we we did the blog, the road trucking blog, and and Facebook, and a newsletter, and a bunch of other stuff. But it's uh, it, it's just like a big family out there, a huge family. Hey, Mike, would it be safe to say that during the TV and, and newspaper media world, Jennifer could not share in your um, activity where now she's not just a co-star, but as we've given an example, you're the B-roll player and she's the A-roll player. Oh, that's the truth. I uh, mean, yeah, that's got to be totally different for a life that you had. Yeah. It, it, for, it... Oops. You liked it so much they took him away. I don't know. We, we lost them there, but he's, he's probably dialing back in there. But, uh, if you folks, there you go. He's he's back up and uh, running again here. Yeah, there, there we go. go. Jennifer hit the wrong button, so <laughs> oh, Jennifer hit the wrong button. I hope your hands. I'm supposed to do that a couple of weeks, but uh, uh, we haven't. We thought when you came back, Jennifer would be the only one on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see what you did to me. So. <laughs> hey, you, 
you, you, you bring something up. Because here's the arm wrestler took me down with that. This is a very important and a very serious topic um, about this. Believe it or not, I can actually ask a serious question. Talk about sickness and injury while on the road <laughs> and, and what people should be taking for precautions, whether they should have a certain type of insurance policy or whatever. But I think you've both experienced. <laughs> we have. Yeah, I, I was doing a video shoot in January. I slipped on the ice in the upper peninsula of Michigan, fell and broke my elbow. Uh. We were traveling so much. I never got to a doctor uh, until like a month and a half later. And he says, well, he's like, good news and bad news is the bad news is you broke your elbow. But the good news is uh, it's pretty much healed up because you didn't do anything. And then, but they had to go in and do some repairs. But we've experienced it all on the road. Jennifer ended up in the hospital in Red Lodge, Montana, a couple of years ago with bacterial pneumonia. A 10 bed hospital. That was an experience. And uh, John, that is a very good question. That's why we look at things like, um, like the Family Motor Coach Association, which is now open to everybody, any of you are RVer. Uh, they have a have uh, insurance that you can get, and when you become a member, where they'll actually have somebody else take your RV back home if you get sick. If the worst happens, somebody dies, they'll actually take it and help you get back home and settle that. Uh, lots of companies have uh, have insurance that you can take that are for RVers, but uh, for sure, take a take a supply of drugs. We've run out of Jennifer's. She has some medications, and we've run out of that. But there's usually a pharmacy nearby where you can get what you need. If you right. go to a national, national chain, chain pharmacy, CVS or Walgreens, right. they'll give it to you where pretty much wherever you are. Uh, take a copy of your health records yes. with you when you travel. Oh, okay. Very important. Yep. Yeah. You think important. of that for your dog, but you forget to take your own. Yeah. yeah. Especially allergies. Yeah. We're, we, yeah. last year, we were on our way to our annual West trip and I ended up at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. I had my gallbladder removed on the road and, uh, you know, it's well, not uh, literally right on the no, road. No, well, it was on the road. I ran off here in the hospital. Right. It was very talented. This hold still. You do have Then you recovered in the roadside rest area. Yeah, yeah, for a couple of minutes, and they kicked us out. They said, you, "There's no recuperating here. You, know, you can only rest." So. Uh, but there, there's but, never a dull moment. Yeah, but Todd's you know, got, Todd's got, Todd's happen. Todd's they, got a question for you. Yeah, Joe too. Yeah, I'll get Joe up there too. Yeah, how about uh, Todd? I see the question from Todd there, and uh, Todd, I. Um, we've been, we are members of the FMCA. Uh, we've, uh, that's the only one we joined. And, and really I, I do that out of loyalty. I, I know those folks. I used to write for their magazine. They're really good people. But, um, now when I first started, uh, I'd say that's what you want to do. But now like in our case, we have this whole online community that is better than any membership organization you could find because 24 seven, there's somebody there that'll answer your questions or can help you out. So. Uh, our, we kind of laugh and say, we don't need no stinking badges. We have a, a, a community of our own on Facebook yeah. that we use. We, we plan our own gatherings. We do a, one just about every month. We just did one that ended uh, Sunday in Sonoma, California, the winery tour. We got one coming up in Glacier next uh, in, in three weeks. And so, um, you know, you don't have to join any of them. They're all kind of fun if you, if you, if you need to get socialized real quick, but Take a look and see what's available on Facebook. Probably the manufacturer of your RV has a Facebook group or a Facebook page. That's the first place I'd suggest that you go and connect with other owners of that or find uh, different groups of interest that, that, you know, that you like to do. Uh, a lot of people are dog friendly people. There's an internet group for people with dogs and uh, uh, just, you know, you can find almost everything you want in social media. Hmm. How about uh, Joe's got another good question here? Oh, gosh. We always get in an argument over that. What's your favorite state? Whoa. Well, you can, you, can each, you can each have one. You don't have to have the same one. <laughs> well, we, we always say, she always says it, and then I say, yeah, that's my favorite. But, you know, I think my favorite is, is um, Utah. I think Utah is probably the most interesting state. You know, you can do like, five national parks in just a week or so in, in and around Utah. I really love Utah. 
Um, Jennifer, you, you know, I know you like uh, Wyoming. I, I love the open spaces. I love the horses. I like Montana. I like the West. We never West. get out to California, Oregon. We know we, we yeah, run we all, out of steam. We, start we have going, to be back for some reason. Every year we're going out to California, and then we're going to go up the coast into Oregon, and and uh, every year we spend so much time in Wyoming, Nevada, Utah. We just never make it up all of our time, and. Uh, uh, and that's the thing. And we love New England, you know, oh, yeah. uh, love Maine. Uh, we've Beautiful. had some great times in in Maine, um, you know, all around the Acadia National Park there and then going up into Canada and eventually into the Maritimes. So um, it's just uh, but I, but I think my favorite right now is Utah. I just really like Utah. Hmm. Hey, you guys, um, another thing that you've had personal experience with, but what type of security devices would you suggest? equipping your unit with because you had an unfortunate scenario a few years ago where uh, most of your camera equipment got wiped out. Oh. If, if, if there are any aftermarket or, or cameras, remote cameras or anything like that, that you can uh, talk well, about. You know, if uh, we did, we were in, uh, we were actually traveling and doing um, a series on uh, route stops 66. on route 66. The oh. most and we approached the uh, Illinois border and there was St. Louis across the way. And we said, well, you know what, let's, let's stop and have dinner, you know, on the Illinois side, there's a really nice looking shopping center. We'll eat there and then we'll rush cross hour. over. It was rush hour. They, uh, in the 45 minutes that we we're in, they broke into our RV. We're still not quite sure how they got in. They didn't break any windows, but we had locked the, the doors. Our dog was in there. And I have a, I always have a dash cam that's on and the dash cam has pictures of the guy who did it. And it picked up audio of he and his associate uh, as they were ram rummaging through and grabbing our stuff. Associate. What a polite yeah. word for fellow crook. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> they, they were actually it's quite fun. polite. They were, very, we were very worried about how they would treat our dog. So I listened carefully to the audio and they were very nice to our dog. Um, but you know, the police never did catch him, even though we gave him all those pictures. Uh, it was uh, just a sad lesson. I lost everything. Um, so, you know, there's, there, I can't think of much that would have changed that situation. We had a dog in there, you know, and uh, we had a security camera. You know, sometimes it just happens. And if that's the worst that ever happened to us, you know, that's what insurance is for. But, it, you know, it was a pain. And uh, it, we, it we, was a pain because we lost things. But what was so hard was the stress level on the two of us, as you were up all night, buying a new computer, trying to secure everything that needed to be secured. That was the stressful part. Things are just things. I keep, yeah, I keep everything online. And now we have everything very strongly encrypted and password protected. So that, that was the lesson to take away from that. Um, but, um, you know, if they're going to get you, they're going to get you. And, uh, and, and that just happened to happen to us there. And, uh, other than that, I think, um, you know, we've never had an issue anywhere. So uh, I, I feel bad that we introduced you as RVing experts when, in fact, you've been robbed and gotten sick on the road. So uh, we, we <laughs> might have blown your credibility for this period of time. Well, I'm <laughs> an experts. expert in what it's like out there. No, it's like it's it's like. Like. Everything has, a, has two sides to it. Yeah. 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 Bob, read Jerry's post. Yeah. Wait, who's Jerry? Oh, yeah. Let me uh, let me put Jerry up there. <laughs> That's very good, Jerry. <laughs> That's the way I kind of feel about clubs. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. A, I'm not a club you guy. Know, yeah. You know, we we get a chance to see Mike and Jennifer. John and I do at the uh, the trade shows and the consumer shows. We catch up with them in Louisville and Hershey and around the country, and uh, we'll do some podcasts with them and for them and. Talk about your podcast, though, and the, and the role that they play. You know, I, I know Greg Gerber's got one of the more popular ones that, uh, with RV Today, uh, RV Daily Report. But talk about some of your podcasts and some of your more uh, interesting ones. I think we've got uh, two or three more than Greg now. I don't know. We're on episode, uh, came out today, 192. 192. Um, wow. Ours is not yeah. geared towards the, the industry. It's geared towards right. the RVer. And, uh right. Somebody tells us that we have the highest rated podcast out there that I've, I've heard. And, you know, I don't know how much that means today versus tomorrow, but it, 
it has uh, been really fun. I'm an old radio guy. That's how I started in the media. And there's a lot to it. We do it from the road many times. It's really like an hour long magazine and it's called the RV podcast. And uh, there's always an interview section. I mentioned Mark Polk. He'll be on next week. And um, we always uh, have some uh, RV news. We do a lot of questions and answers. We have an off the beaten path report. We have technology tips. But it's like a magazine, and we have more fun doing that. Uh, it just amazes us that it's about an hour long, an hour and five minutes every week. And it amazes us the, the email we get and the people who say they've listened to every one of them, all 192. It's, Some, it's, sometimes it's a little frightening because you meet somebody and they know all about you. And the, yeah, they'll and say, you don't know anything about them. They'll start telling you something <laughs> yeah. about you and say, How do you know that? And they say, Oh, you said that in episode 14. So. <laughs> well, you know, when when you spoke about technology earlier, you've also adapted technology for the podcast. I mean, I, I run into you in the halls of Louisville and you say, Bob, let's do a podcast. And you pull out your little recorder and we find a quiet corner and you do it. And nobody knows the difference between us standing behind a couple of poles in Louisville or a broadcast studio. Yeah, that's that's the way it goes. It, it is pretty fun. And the podcast uh, is fun. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to talk him out of it because I said we don't need a weekly commitment. Yeah, but uh, it is. And I have never, yeah. I've never missed a now week. Now be careful, you go boasting. Well, no, you know, because <laughs> this is a big argument of contention. She thinks I should take two weeks off, you know, at Christmas time, and I, I'm, I'm used to deadlines and stuff. We've done 192 weeks in a row. I've done them from the hospital bed and sick, and uh, we've, you know, we're we're now debating if we're going to maybe take a Christmas break for them, but. Uh, it's been just, a, it's fun. And you, you showed a little thing. People can actually use our, on our roadtrekking.com uh, travel blog. They can click a little uh, uh, menu link there and they can leave a voice message and then we can play listeners comments in the, in the podcast, which we do every week. Hey guys, I got a question for you that excluding industry events like Hershey and um, you know, Louisville and Elkhart, that kind of thing. What are some of the fun events, mass events that you've gone to, in your RV, but but weren't RV events. I mean, have oh. you been to Albuquerque? Have you been to Oshkosh? Um, about the Biltmore. Yeah, the, I want to. I've always wanted to go to the Biltmore, and I got to go there. That was kind of an RV event, though. We went to um, a group called the Overlanders. Have you heard of the Overlanders? I haven't. So this no. very few people have, and we they have two events. Uh, they had one in North Carolina on the grounds of the Biltmore, and we 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 got to stay there. And then another one out in Flagstaff in May. So they have a fall and a winter. And these are, these are people who go out and they, they boondock. They boondock in car campers and tents on top of cars. Uh, they have those monster zombie uh, mobiles that the zombies can't get. You know, those great big tanks that are RVs. But we had a ball at that and just really enjoyed that. And then we got to stay at the Biltmore. So Jennifer was happy with that. Um, but you, you, actually know, stayed, you actually stayed in the Biltmore. We stayed in the Biltmore. We stayed on the grounds, and then we did we camp stayed. one night out on the out in their fields that they had out there. But then Jennifer said, "I'm going to the Biltmore." So we went there. <laughs> that's and it. That that's fun. interesting. Um, well, his, you know, I think we love uh, doing things like uh, uh, just taking off and pulling over someplace and spending even day camping. You know, there's no campground. It might be off the side of the road. It might be at a park. You know, you spend the day there, enjoy it. You got the RV to come back to. And then at night, you can find some place to stay. So we do a lot of that, too. And we travel with our dog, which is the other thing. Uh, most of the time, our dog is with us. And uh, that that sometimes can present a challenge if you're, you know, if you're if you're in national parks because pets aren't very, very yeah. friendly. Or hot weather. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Leaving it. It's a question from Joe. Uh, I'm sure he's looking at it from the consumer side of Hershey, not the uh, trade side of Hershey. But uh, you guys plan on being up there this year? Yeah, we'll be there. Are we going to have our dinner again, you guys? We are going to have the media dinner. Don put out a little post on it yesterday. No, and she names. no healthy yeah. food, though, on the media dinner. But, uh, no. Well, we go to, you know, they don't serve healthy food at Fenichi's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but yeah, yeah, Joe, we, we will be at Hershey. We love going to Hershey. This year, we're also going to go to, uh, I know. it used to be called Pomona, but now it's the California RV show in October. We'll be there for that. 
uh, and we'll be at the Tampa uh, RV Super Show in January. So those are the big three shows that we do. Uh, there's one that we have been doing the last couple of years out in April. It's called the Super B Show. The folks at La Mesa nice. RV put that on, and it's nothing but Class Bs. And they have like 125 different models on display in the football stadium, and that's been fun. So we just, I, I, I followed your activity on that, and I, I'd like to do something like that with our nerve to deal is perhaps in the fall because just the increased popularity of bees, we have to get that message out to more RVs, and that's a great concept. They did it in a football stadium. In the football, it's too hot in Phoenix right now. You know, it's 100. And, when the day we got there was 100 degrees. So yeah, you're in the University of Phoenix Stadium. Oh, indoors. Yeah, indoors yeah, in that building, building. Yeah, in Glendale, right? Yep, yep. And they had the Super Bowl a few years ago. Yeah, yep, they did. Oh, and in okay, okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, what's the next big thing on your agenda? Your next big trip? We've got. Um, well, we're doing a quick one to Minnesota next week. Um, we're then home for I don't know about four or five days. Then it looks like we're going to New Mexico for uh, kind of a special little event we're going to do there with uh, some people and uh, maybe take you driving in New Mexico. You're driving to that, right? Uh, well, we'll be in an RV in three yeah. or four places, I think. And then then we've got to skedaddle up for the middle of the month. We have um, uh, we put on an annual photo safari. And usually we pick a really scenic area, the Great Smoky Mountains or Yellowstone. This year we're at Glacier National Park. And uh, we, uh, we our events that we have, we keep them down. We try and limit them to about 50 people at the most because that we found you can then connect with each other, except this year, because Jennifer got excited last year. Yeah, last year we had so much fun and the campground was large enough to accommodate more people. And so when we all talked about it at the end of the year, I said, let's have more people come. So we're about double the size for that yeah, one. So I hope but that's works. fun because we take a group of people out. We teach them. I show them all my photo gear and we do photo, uh, a, a kind of a photo story. We shoot a lot of wildlife, a lot of, a lot of landscape. We got one in july uh we're whitewater rafting in uh, north carolina we've got uh in cattle uh, drive. oh and uh i'm missing a couple but in fall we we're doing a cattle drive in kansas we're going cattle to disney drive. world we're going to disney world fort wilderness in november and uh so between that and then our own fun where we just kind of go putts around places we're you know we say we're on the road about half the time and now it's 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 more like three quarters of the time yeah as far as the cattle drive, I'd rather go to a good steakhouse. <laughs> well, af after the cattle drive, you select your cow, and then you go to the steakhouse. Yeah, so, I, it's kind of so, like your lobsters up there uh, in, in New England. If, yeah. If, if Dawn was on, she would cut us off right here. She right. Would yeah. Just, yeah. You would just leave the broadcast. Yeah. And, well, and that right. Are all these are all these events on your website? Uh, some of them are, some of them are things that we've been invited to that we're going to go and, and do. And um, as we have kind of broadened our appeal, we're, we're getting a lot of invitations at places to go and we're trying to figure out how you can plan out trips and cover as many as you can. But most of the ones they're, they're there, if you just search under the word gatherings, you'll find the list of the ones we yeah, have. Okay. Some are, some are all filled. We don't call them rallies or anything like that. And they're very informal. We, People are, you know, we, we have some suggested ideas, but it's, uh, and it's, it's, they're all for, you know, fairly active people you want that you want to do stuff with, you know, have, we did one last year for rock climbing. We didn't go on that one. No, we didn't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, your track record on uh, medical issues, yeah. I don't, think that, I don't think I'd recommend, I yeah, so. I don't think I'd I don't recommend think so. rock climbing. My truck. I had enough yeah. trouble on just walking on the ice in the UP. <laughs> oh, we do a big winter camp out every year too, in the snow. We like to, we're, we're big ambassadors trying to teach people that you can RV all year round. There's very little difference between summer and winter, except you wear a lot more clothes and you run the heater in the winter, but you can RV in the winter time. And we have a ball. We're like a bunch of crazy kids playing in the snow. Amazing. I bet the dog loves it too. Oh, oh you have dog no idea how much loves the dog it. loves that. Yeah, we yeah, took him. Have you ever been to that big flying in Oshkosh? Snow on the ground, and he was just having a ball. Our dog, he's a Norwegian Alcon. So, so then we took him from there down to Florida, and we got there, and they have these beautiful white sandy beaches. And he thought that was snow, so he comes bounding out of the RV, and he runs and he jumps in the sand, 
and he goes, <laughs> he had his face. He looked at me like I had pulled a big fast one on him, you know. <laughs> you had a question about Oshkosh, John? Yeah. I, have you guys ever been up to Oshkosh for that big uh, fly-in? That's a, it's a huge. Uh, we have no. We have no. as well. I, and I think Jennifer will never let me go there because I would want an airplane next. They buy an airplane next. I would really like an airplane. Hey, we're going to head out there next month for the first time. Are you? A, are you? But a you got to admit, though, it, the number of people that you meet—not necessarily in campgrounds, but just you know, when you're when you're parked in a restaurant, they come up to you with the RV, right, and and say, "What's it like in that?" Right? Oh yeah. I'm sure, you yeah. must give tours in restaurants. We do. Oh, every place we go, well, uh, we have to give a tour, and it's 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 fun. You know, we love doing that. You meet people and you learn stuff every time you talk to somebody. You know, the thing about RVs is is uh, it's the great leveler. We are such a divided country. Everybody's at each other's throat and politics yeah. and, you know, nasty name calling. But but in RVers, you have such a diverse group of people with all they're from all spectrums of the political uh, arena. Yeah. Uh, but RVing is the thing. They that put people, it away when they're RVing. There's there's peace and harmony and and you really get to enjoy people again. Should I get our animal companion in? He's barking. Oh, our animal companions yeah. out there barking a lot. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he must hear us. Talk. He wants a cameo appearance, but no, he hadn't get one today. All right, we we got to get a we we got to get you guys back to New England so John and I can cook you a a, a main lobster dinner. I'm up there all summer. And, uh, John frequents that on weekends with his motorhome and. Joe says you need to come up to the White Mountains and drive up Mount Washington. That now that that would be a great video for you. Especially that road, road trek. Last week, go to home. I'd take that road trek right up Mount Washington. So, Joe, one of my uh, things I like to do for fitness is uh, bike ride, uh, real bikes, bicycles. He's barking. And uh, she's going to go get the dog. He's, out, he's barking. And uh, about, and uh, about bikes. I, I have a training video that I put on a on a DVD, and I have my stationary bike in the winter that I'll ride. And it's a ride up and down uh, Mount Washington. So, uh, yeah, I would love video? to. I would love it. Well, you're already familiar with it, then, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I've you're never been there, familiar. but I would love to go do. I've ridden it. I've ridden it virtually on my bike a lot. <laughs> I've seen it. So, so, if you went there, Mike, would you ride your bike up, or would you take the motorhome up? Um, we took the motorhome up to the top of Pikes Peak, fifteen thousand feet one year. Uh, I would. Uh, I don't think I'd take a bike now. I see Maureen's got a question. We we picked up uh, one of our sponsors is uh, uh, make e-bikes. They make an e-bike and we uh, e-bikes and we got some this year. They are so much fun. You still pedal with an e-bike. Hey, you guys ask Zagami how he tried, how he did, how he fared driving an e-bike in the RV show in Boston and how he knows what the wall feels like. No, no. The Not ground. the wall, the, the concrete floor. Oh, oh dear. We, we, we had an e-bike display because uh, we do the, the RV show in one segment of the Boston Convention Center. and There's an auto show in the other two uh, sections. So we actually did have this year an entire Class B motorhome display in the auto show. And next to that, we had an e-bike display with several manufacturers. So behind the curtains, John and I took rides on them. And I... I took one, but this is a uh, very slick concrete floor. These are the electric so, bikes. Now. I, yeah, these are yeah. electric bikes. So yeah. I, yeah. I, I, un, I un, underestimated my ability to turn on a yeah. dime. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff happens. We see okay. him going. All of a sudden, we don't see him anymore. He's way down the other end of the building, and I said, "We need to, we need to send a search party down there." And he came walking the bike back. <laughs> Well, I hadn't happened to us yet. No, wait, no, 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 I did not. I got back up on the bike and I came back. I did not walk that bike back. And the handlebars were all sideways and everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> In fact, just to show you, just to yeah. show you Zagami's blue cloud, the blue collar background, before he got on that bike, he took a baseball card and a clothespin and, and put, it put, it the, put it in the tires <laughs> to make it sound like a car. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we all did that. We all did that. No, no. Yeah. You're so right. Well, you know, I think we could continue this for about uh, eight yeah. hours, and, and we've kind of extended ourselves here a little bit. Uh, you know, is a good friend of mine that uh, 
from my document imaging days, but he likes to follow us along every week. But uh, you're hitting home because this particular guy, Mike, is a cancer survivor and does the Boston Pan Mass Challenge. And he just did it. Ed, correct me, but I think your last one was last year, and he was 75 years young, and he did the Boston Pan Mass Challenge. Which wow. is over 100 miles. Yeah. Wow. He's, wow. He, 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 he's our hero out there, so he, he can relate to all that uh, all that bike stuff that you're doing. Well, 70 is the new 50. And, uh, you know, I think that's really true because I people are very active now, and that's that's good. That's really good. Yeah. So for people who uh, might not have known you before tonight, and uh, hopefully you're going to break our record for uh, views, uh, you're very kind taking the time to talk to us. I'd, uh, I'd talk to you all night long. Um, this is our half-hour yeah. show, by the way. Yeah, yeah this is a half-hour show. Our podcast is an hour and five minutes every week, and it's supposed to be a half-hour. But, hey, you know, <laughs> things happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, roadtrekking.com. For yep. the new, uh, the, the uh, news. Actually, you get your podcast on there. You got the ability for everything right there. Everything is the, the YouTube, the podcast, the newsletter. It's all right there. Social media, everything. I can find it all from there. Okay, uh, John. Any uh, any closing questions for Mike no, and Jeff? You know what? It's it's so nice to have this opportunity to talk to these guys, even though they're you know twelve hundred miles away from us now. But when we meet at the conventions. We're all, you know, we get to say hello in the break room, and then we're all off, you know, with our microphones and cameras doing our work. Um, but we got to make it a point to get you get you all to New England to, uh, you know, relax. I know you came up with your kids on a family thing a few years ago, but then for some reason you had to scoot back quick. I don't know whether there was something that happened or. Yeah, we had a was, dog. That was our. We have a dog named Bo. Hey, Bo, where are you? Come here, Bo. He's out in the other room. Uh, but we had a Bo. A dog, the predecessor uh, got sick while we were gone. Okay, that could. Dog, yeah. yeah. Here's, yeah. I, think, I think Todd. Hey, Todd, Todd say hi to Bo. Come here. Come here, Bo. Say hi to everybody, Bo. Hey, Bo. Yeah. You need some Get it up there. I don't know if you can see Bo. Oh. Well, uh-oh. Oh. There goes the camera. There goes the camera. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> My dog. Well. I don't know if you can see Todd's comment, but I think he kind of sums it up because you're the type of people that when people get a chance to meet you and see how down to earth you are and and the valuable information that you provide to RVers and your RVers yourself, uh, you, you all become like family as John and I have with you over the years. So I think Todd kind of sums it up right there really nicely. Uh, closing statements, Mike or Jennifer? Um, just, uh, I want to just tell your audience what a treasure you two are and, uh, how well respected you guys are in the RV industry. Now we're, we don't feel part of the industry at all. Cause we're just RVers. We just like to go out there, but, but you guys really have a, just a, a great reputation. And, and, uh, besides being friends, it's, it's, I hope your audience understands what a treasure they have in you. And for us, you know, um, just go to roadtrekking.com, uh, the big thing for us is if they would subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's great. We're, um, we're you know, we've got lots of videos and stories about our misadventures <laughs> and our adventures. And, uh, and we have new content on the blog every single day. So that's always up there, too. And the podcast is every released every Wednesday. And um, it's a big family. We love hearing from everybody. So this will be great. And I got to get them out east. Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right. Yeah, you can go 90 and keep going. We want, we want to get you back up to Maine. All right, folks, we're going to end it for this week. Mike and Jennifer Wendland, thank you very much. Uh, we really sincerely appreciate it, and uh, we'll catch up to you down the road. Thank you, All guys. Right, thank great, you. great to be with you. Bye-bye. All right. Yeah.